All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. So it's been two weeks since I made a video, and I know that I promised you all that I'd be more consistent with these videos, but if you haven't noticed, I moved. So I moved full-time to Florida. This is my new official office area. Uh, so it's good to be here recording videos in this new area. And I'll kind of give you guys uh, maybe a quick tour of it. Uh, maybe, so we got computer here. Desk and samurai sword, some art, some space. Uh, got all my trinkets here, a bunch of stuff, and mini fridge and Thanos glove. Have a full on balcony as well with an amazing view. But yeah, it's just a little bit of a uh, quick tour around the place. So let me kind of talk about uh, some trading stuff and we'll kind of get into any topics that are main and trending. So, number one is I want to talk about does money buy you happiness, right? So it's actually very funny because I'm having the best month of the year so far, right? In July, I'm so far, I'm up $200,000 this month with only one red day of $5,000. I'll put my profit calendar in the link in the description so you guys can see it too. So, you know, making $200,000 in a month is pretty amazing, but I'm gonna talk about the lessons that got me there, some thoughts and continued ideas of does money buy you happiness? And it's very ironic because I was just recently featured in the Money Buys Happiness podcast, which went really, really well. It just released yesterday, and I'll also include a link in the description of that video. So let's talk about trading, right? So what led to me having this large, substantial month what is different this month and what lessons can you take from this to make money in your own personal trading? So number one is I took some time off, right? So by the end of June, I took some time off because I felt a little bit burnt out, felt a little bit tired. And you know, after trading for 10 and a half years, it becomes very daunting and very repetitive and very lonely to just be sitting in this office all by yourself every single day. So because I'm getting married this year, I kind of took the executive decision to take more time off this year, right? Simply because there's not going to be another opportunity where I'm going to get married again. Hopefully, knock on wood, it's one and done, right? So I kind of took the executive decision to take some more time off this year. And what I've noticed is when I take time off, it kind of resets my brain. It kind of gets me back to appreciating trading. Instead of trading feeling like a job where I have to show up every day and make a paycheck, after taking some time off, it kind of resets your brain to think of the passion that I first had for trading in the first place. The reason why I became so successful trading is because I really loved it. You know, for people that like cars, for people that like watches, when you learn more about cars and you learn more about watches, because your passion is so easy to learn. So. For me trading, even 10 years into the game, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to learn from other traders that may be better than me, that have more skills than me. Because even at this stage of being a multi-millionaire trader, you know, I still feel like I can do better. So I kind of felt like I was slacking with my learning. I kind of felt like I was slacking with just everything in terms of trading because here I am every day just going through the same monotonous routine every day, drinking my coffee, coming to my desk, making the watch list, trading, and then you know doing whatever else for the rest of the day. So after taking some time off, it kind of really reset my brain to be like, you know what? I love trading. I love doing it. It makes me very happy. Don't get me wrong, the losing days suck, but overall, it's my passion. It's something I'm really, really good at, something that I really like learning, and something that just really makes me happy, right? So by taking that time off and resetting my brain, I came in with a new mindset this year. I came in with a mindset of I want to trade with smaller size, make a little bit less money, and focus on being more happy. Because as, as amazing as trading is and as much as I love it, those red days really do hurt, right? Not financially, financially too, but more emotionally, right? So I kind of came in with a mindset of I want to start July just sizing down dramatically, right? I want to focus on you know less stress, less money and more happiness in my life. You know, I'm nearing 30. I've been doing this for 10 and a half years. I've already found success doing it. So I don't want to kill myself every single day trying to make more money because at the end of the day, I'm doing it because I'm competitive and there's always gonna be someone that has more money than me anyway. So it's rather ironic that the moment that I stopped sizing up, the moment that I dropped my size and focus on consistency and happiness 
is the exact moment that I had the biggest month of the year at $200,000. And you think to yourself, well, Alex, how the hell did you have a $200,000 a month if you size down? Well, it's based on the consistency. I had one red day this month of $5,000. One red day, right? And my biggest day this month was $70,000. That was on the Trump assassination day where I went long DJT in pre-market and short at the open. So there's still plenty of plenty of opportunities every day. Even today, we had IMNN, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second, but just to kind of stay on the same topic is, it was ironic and it really opened up my eyes to the fact that sizing down actually led to me having more profits in my trading. And you don't believe it until you actually see it is, not only am I leading to more profits in my trading, I'm leading to a lot more happiness in my life. You know, I felt like when I was making a bunch of money trading, you know, over the course of the year, I just felt really sad. I felt really sad because I felt so stressed making that money. It wasn't easy money. It was just really, really difficult for me. And, you know, trading is a career where you can make more money than a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer combined. And the trade-off is more stress than a doctor, lawyer, and engineer combined. So I was very happy to realize and recognize that this epiphany of taking some time off to clear my head and tell me exactly what I needed to do to get to that level that I want to get to, which is where I'm at right now, right? If I could just continue to stay at this exact same mindset, this exact same size, this exact same trading process, I'm on track to make two and a half million dollars, right? On the year, which is more money than usual with less stress than usual. It's almost like the holy grail of my personal trading is whenever I size up and whenever I get too aggressive, I get way too aggressive for my own good. I am very risk seeking, right? There's a lot of people that are risk averse that don't like risk. I am risk seeking, right? Maybe it's in my blood, maybe it's in my family, maybe I was just born, but I like risk. I like, because I know that the more you risk, the more money you can make, right? So it was very, very eye-opening for me that sizing down dramatically is what caused more profits. Now, why does sizing down lead to causing more profits? It's because you're less emotional on the trade. It allows you to be more patient on the trade. It allows you to actually trade the stock rather than trading your emotions. So whenever you're oversized in a trade, your heart starts pumping, you start sweating a little bit, and you're like, you know what? It's not going well, it's not going well, I'm just gonna get out, I'm just gonna get out, or I'm gonna add to loser, add to loser, add to loser. But if you're using smaller size, you're more nimble. You know, how many times if a stock, if you're sized up and the stock goes 10 cents against you, you're like, I'm gonna die. But whenever you have no size, and the stock goes a dollar against you, you could eat a burrito, you could smoke some weed, you could do whatever you want, right? And that's the thing about trading is you have to find that sweet spot of size that you're comfortable with the stock going a little bit against you without your heart palpitating. And there's a very, very easy way to determine this. The easy way is by trusting your body. Whenever you are stressed in a trade, Whenever your heart is palpitating, whenever you are sweating, you're in way too big on the trade. So you have to find that sweet spot of size where your body doesn't start going crazy, right? There's no linear example. I can't say it's 500 shares. I can't say it's 1,000 shares because everyone's risk profile is different. But what I learned from Dr. Brett Steenbarger is let your body, let your body tell you when you're at that level. So that's number one. Number two is does money buy you happiness, right? So, I mean, I'm sitting here, look, let me, let me actually show you this. So I'm sitting here with this goddamn <laughs> Louis Vuitton Thanos glove, right? So check this out, right? So I got this goddamn <laughs> Thanos glove. This should cost me $10,000. So I think I'm very uh, well-versed in answering the question of does money buy you happiness? And again, I talked about this on the Money Buys Happiness podcast, which I'll link below, is money buys you freedom, right? And what you do with that freedom may lead to happiness. Because what they say is money is an amplifier of your personality. So if you're a scumbag, more money makes you more of a scumbag. If you're a good guy, more money makes you more of a good guy. And that's because when you have money, 
it unlocks the ability to just be your true self without consequences, right? So for me, what I feel like does money buy you happiness? Money buys me freedom. Money buys me the freedom to not care about the prices of a restaurant menu. Money buys me the freedom to fly first class wherever I want. Money buys me the freedom to get nice cars and nice watches and nice everything. But if you, you have to treat money as a tool. For me, what I do is anytime I buy a nice watch, anytime I buy a nice car, it's a celebration and a trophy of my hard work manifested into a physical item. So whenever I have a nice watch on, I remember that that's when I made $500,000 in a day. Whenever I'm driving my car, that's when I know I had a million dollar year. So for me, having material items is a form of trophies for all of my hard work. And that's what I suggest doing. So any big life moments, any big key moments, you don't have to spend you know, $300,000 on a car, but maybe you could get yourself a two, $3,000 gift all relative. If you make two, three thousand dollars, don't spend two, three thousand dollars on the gift. Make twenty thousand dollars and spend two, three thousand dollars on the gift. But let that be a trophy for your hard work. So that's the way I feel there. Uh, in terms of trading today, we had some pretty good setups today. We had IMNN sell the new setup today, which I kind of underperformed on. So let me kind of talk about that sell the new setup and what that is. So a sell the new setup happens when a stock is running into a catalyst whether it be pharmaceutical data, whether it be you know a spaceship launch, if it's a space company or a tech launch or whatever. So what ends up happening is the stock runs up in anticipation of that news, and the moment the news comes out, the stock reverses because there's no more catalyst. A key example of this this year was GameStop with Roaring Kitty. I made a video on that. I'll include it in the description as well. So if you guys remember, Roaring Kitty came out and said that he's gonna have a live stream on GameStop. GameStop went from 35 to 65. And the exact moment that the live stream started, the stock tanked all the way down to 20 because it was anticipated. You buy in anticipation of the news and you sell when the news comes out. Have you ever heard the term buy the rumor, sell the news? So it was the same thing on IMNN today. They released data at 8 a.m. Stock kind of ran up. They had a conference call at 8.30. The catalyst was over and the stock went straight down. So that was a big opportunity today. I know a lot of members crushed that today, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of come on here, recap my $200,000 a month, recap the Money Buys Happiness podcast and recap trading for the day. I'm gonna to try to come on here and again, make these weekly videos now that I'm fully moved in, but I want to kind of ask you guys in the comments section below, uh, what type of lessons do you guys want to hear from me? Maybe what I could do is the top uh, liked comment of the previous video I'll make on the next video. So for example, whatever top comment there is in this video, maybe I'll use that as a topic for next video. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys like this type of content and I'll see you back at it again next time. Thanks everyone.